Up next on Good Taste, the secret Tex-Mex hideout for San Antonio Spurs players. Because it's the tequila the, guacamole maybe. that puts them in the finals every year. Plus, eye-popping sushi with one of Houston's master chefs. Talk about a whiz with a knife. I like it a lot because it's so fresh and the sushi here is so delicious. And go behind the brisket with the owner of one of Texas Monthly's top 50 barbecue joints. This fire is the center of all of it. Good taste starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Good Taste. I'm Tangie Patton. We're in Houston, the nation's fourth largest city and also one of the best cities for eating out. We can't wait to show you a fantastic new find. All you have to do is bring an appetite. Grab your chopsticks, take a seat. The show at the sushi bar at Cata Rabada in Houston is about to begin. It's a stunner featuring the amazing artistry of master sushi chef Horiuchi Manabu. Simple ingredients, meticulously prepared. A sensory delight, not only for the palate, but also for the eyes. Chef Hori is amazing, he's a great chef. I, mean, I think it's the best sushi in Houston by far. Oh, that's fantastic. The vibe is hip and sophisticated, with clean, contemporary lines providing the perfect backdrop for the James Beard nominated chef's magnificent menu. Two kitchens, one cold and one hot, serve guests a mix of classical and modern Japanese cuisine, mingled with French undertones, like adding heavy cream to ramen, or melding foie gras with fish. 40 different species of fish from all over the world are flown in to Kata Rabata, where Chef Ori, as locals call him, makes cutting intricate slices of seafood seem effortless. This is called sea perch. Wow, this may be one of my favorite tastings, if not favorite, I've ever done. Want to try some too? Dive into this eye-popping mountain of seafood on ice, meant to be shared with buttery El Toro tuna, hand massaged for tenderness, lime-caught mackerel, succulent scallops, sea bream, golden eye snapper, and salmon, finished with a delicate orchid. Try slurping these delicate spoonfuls of sweet Alaskan king crab, surprisingly paired with a thin layer of uni, or sea urchin. Look closely at the tiny black pearls of caviar, soaked in golden dashi vinaigrette, and accented with a tiny, edible viola or scoop into this steamed egg custard soup called shuimushi with shiitake and oyster mushrooms, chunks of plump duck breast, and crunchy ginkgo nuts, all topped with garden fresh spinach, thick slices of foie gras, and drizzled with a honey-like unagi or eel sauce. Each dish prepared to perfection to meet Chef Ori's lofty standards. You started in Japan and your mom was a chef. Correct. My mom was a chef in a retirement center. Chef Ori's passion for cooking began early. By age 10, he started learning from his meticulous mother, later mastering the strict, centuries-old traditions of Japanese cooking at the prestigious Sugi Culinary Institute. What, what do you like for people to order? Because you enjoy the artistry, the, the technique that you use to create it. My favorite is sushi. You know, sushi is a very simple. Simple things is uh, most difficult. Try to make beautiful food and it also tastes good. His work at some of Japan's most celebrated restaurants eventually earned Chef Ori the honor of becoming the executive chef for the Japanese Consulate General in Houston. From Japan to Texas, there was a little bit of culture shock. Food is big. I mean, <laughs> Japanese food is small. But Texas food is a pretty big. We're spot on, you're yeah. absolutely right. Especially like a steak. I think a Japanese uh, size is about 
four, five on steak in restaurant. It's a, it's <laughs> so small. Have you ever ordered a 16 ounce steak while you've been here? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> now he's breaking all the rules giving traditional Japanese flavors a modern twist by mixing ingredients like sashimi with foie gras. They are razor thin. I feel like we should be whispering, this is such a delicate <laughs> thing to watch. Slender slices of amberjack are seasoned with salt and pepper, cured with lime juice, then a splash of olive oil. And then the foie gras. Foie gras. This is a pancia de foie gras. The dish is garnished with crushed hazelnuts, fresh chives, and a drizzle of sherry vinaigrette. Lord it, lap it. Yeah. And then eat it. Oh my gosh. Well, foie gras, say no more. With the lime and that fish. <laughs> Cocktails are creative too, with a massive fusion of flavor. We gotta take a quick. <laughs> From shaking all these drinks. This is our articulate ginger. This is the Wicked by Design. Ooh, cheers. Uh, cheers. <laughs> I'm still amazed. Powerhouse cocktails paired with exquisite cuisine. Sure to please anyone in your party. I love this place. It's one of my favorite sushi restaurants in Houston. I like it a lot because it's so fresh and the sushi here is so delicious. I like anything he likes because he's the expert. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time, we like to share with you some of the chef's secrets in the kitchen, their favorite tools. Thought I'd share some of my favorite with you. I'm going to start with this fun little microplaner. This is the handiest gadget you'll ever have. Whenever a recipe calls for zesting a lemon or a lime, it's so easy. If you can see that, it's perfect every time. Another thing I like to use for cheese, you've probably seen some of these in the restaurants. They're really kind of fun. You just stick your cheese in there and voila. Perfect grated cheese every time. Last but not least, my most favorite thing in the world is my knife. Even more so because my son gave me this, but I love this. The brand is Shun, it's lightweight, it's perfect for my hand. They make a variety of sizes and you always want a very dependable, sharp knife. That's some of my favorites, I've got so many more, but I wanted to share those with you. Okay, coming up. We're saving you a seat at one of the best barbecue spots in the state. Texas Monthly apparently agrees. This is literally the nucleus of my entire world. But next, we'll tell you the secret ingredient to kick your guac up a notch. A la the twist. There's a place for you at the table. Come right back. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you saved room for more. We're about to take your taste buds on a tropical tour of Mexico. Best part, you never have to leave the state. In a city shining with hundreds of tasty south of the border stars, San Antonio's La Fogata is one of the brightest, bringing smiles to diners from all over the world for nearly 40 years. This tropical treasure tantalizes with its authentic Mexican dishes. Oh, I like, really like that it. spice. And as you would expect, lots of icy cold, colorful margaritas. Oh, I really like the mango margaritas and the coconut loco. La Fogada's charming hacienda style courtyard takes you back to old Mexico. It's one of my favorite places. This local gym is loaded with lush tropical foliage. We have seven pantas on the property. Seven? Yes, seven. La Fogata also sports seven separate patios. This was like the bird room, right? Yes, there used to be a cage behind you. Each with a story of its own. This uh, courtyard is named the Texaco Room. This was an actual gas station. Yes. This spot's colorful history includes a patron's list of past presidents and politicians, professional athletes, rock stars, J-Lo, and me. Oh my gosh, oh how funny. I don't remember that evening. I, it has nothing to do with the margaritas. Stop by and you might spot the San Antonio Spurs planning their secret strategies right here in this courtyard, named after the NBA champs. Margaritas, I'm told, are on the menu. Puts them in the finals every year. Well, they seem like <laughs> they, make the a good, they make good decisions <laughs> after they drink a margarita, maybe. So. It, it, it can help. 
What's no secret is La Fogata's famous, flavorful favorites. These are uh, tampiqueño steak, which is the arrochera. House marinated fajita skirt steak is plated with three fresh jumbo shrimp, sauteed with ancho chilies, butter, and garlic, garnished with a grilled green onion, partnered with La Fogata's famous bacony charro beans, and gently seasoned Mexican rice. It's different than your normal uh, chili relleno. You know, this is cooked on uh, charbroil. Sound the alarm for this fire-roasted poblano chili al carbon. A garden fresh poblano stuffed with juicy shredded chicken breast and Oaxaca cheese, all roasted over a wood-fired grill. But it, it has a smoky, smoky flavor. Grill, yeah. Yes. Don't miss La Fogada's famous enchiladas verdes, also with shredded chicken breast, this time tucked inside a warm corn tortilla, baking in house-made salsa verde de tomatillo drizzled with sour cream and showered with queso fresco. We love everything and we want just a little bit of everything. Can't decide? How about un poquito de todo? A little bit of everything. Center stage, a gooey Oaxaca cheese enchilada smothered in a rich chili con carne gravy, sharing the spotlight with a crispy chicken flauta, plus a tasty taco al carbón, freshly chopped pico de gallo, rice and charro beans, so much goodness all in one meal. It was like a big magical forest when we were kids. So many magical memories made here within these massive wooden doors. I remember when it was a real small little restaurant before they built the patio and everything. You'd never guess it now, but La Fogata actually began as a tiny taco cafe built inside an old ice cream shop. Seven tables, uh, 10 bar stools, and, and that was it. And you got your tacos and right there. We got the, the tacos counter. right there, yes. Everything right there. And it was on the menu, just tacos. One of the most popular dishes to come out of these kitchens is a special request a feisty guacamole spiked with a secret ingredient. First, uh, you get you hand pick your avocado. Yeah. Make sure that it's not too firm. You just have to be a little softer, tender. Yeah. I'm going to help you out here, right? This is the way you cut it. And then you yeah. just move the avocado, and this is the fun part. See, I just use a spoon. Smash the avocado with a fork, then add pico de gallo, salt and pepper, and the secret ingredient. Salud. Hey, salud. A shot of tequila, or two. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. It's so good. Then, another twist. A topping of crispy fried beef chicharrones and spicy hot serrano. Mmm, the tequila is really good. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to ask for the tequila. Yes. Tequila and guacamole. What a perfect pairing in a perfect paradise. It's really San Antonio. It's wonderful. Que bonitas, que bonitas, las hijas de Don Simón. Still to come, it's Texas Wine Month. Three of my finds so you can experience Texas in a glass. And next stop, Tyler, for one of the best barbecue joints in the state. But the tempting taste don't stop with barbecue. Fruit, woods, tannins, cherries, chocolates, vanillas, like all of those things that you probably the same words in a wine tasting. Bottoms up, good taste will be right back. Good Taste with Tangi is brought to you in part by HEB. There's just something about barbecue that brings people together. I can tell this is gonna be good. Especially when it's some of the best barbecue in the world. A little bit juicy and drippy and messy. Just one bite of these lip-smacking pork ribs. Tender brisket, juicy poultry, or smoky sausage, and you'll see why Texas Monthly named Stanley's Famous oh, yeah. Pit Barbecue in Tyler one of its top 50 best barbecue joints in the world. Best I've ever had. Stanley sits in the same spot where it started more than 50 years ago. Now, it's a jazzed up shack where you can jam to live music six nights a week. We love coming, Stanley. The atmosphere's great, good bands, good food. Belly up to the fully stocked outdoor bar, boasting more than 90 different bourbons. All from a maestro of meats, who you might say marches to the beat of his own drum. And takes barbecue 
very seriously. This is literally the nucleus of my entire world. This is my children. This is my mortgage. This is everything. This fire is the center of all of it. Wood, fire, meat, a simple formula. Oh, wow. But it takes someone special to create the kind of queue folks will stand in line for. It's awesome. Like Stanley's marvelously moist brisket. Drizzled, if you like, with one of Stanley's incredible homemade sauces. I think chopped brisket is the best I've ever had. Or this East Texas treasure, the brother-in-law, one of Stanley's super popular sandwiches with pork tender chopped brisket. Layered with a smoky sausage link with a heaping scoop of tangy coleslaw. And the mother clucker is awesome. You can say that again. The awesome mother clucker is a meaty mouthful stacked with a smoky, dry rubbed chicken thigh, crunchy candied bacon, gooey cheddar cheese, and a farm fresh over easy egg. Look what you built. Right, and it's just still so weird. It, I just can't even believe it. Like, I'm just, is this real? I'm always pinching myself. After the death of J.D. Stanley, the restaurant's original owner, Nick and his wife, Jen, took on the daunting task of resurrecting Tyler's beloved barbecue restaurant in 2006. You know, Mr. Stanley and his, his sons were not here to show us how they used to do it. So it really kind of became a, a journey to the roots of Texas barbecue in general. It was not an overnight success. When I first came here, that there were hours in the day when not a single car pulled in this parking lot. That's when Nick hired pitmaster pal Jonathan Shaw. Order up. Before long, accolades began pouring in. We got People's Choice Award for best ribs two years in a row. I think the first year people were like, oh, cool, whatever, fluke. And then the second year, they were like, okay, wait a second. Something's going on here. I'm big on his ribs. You'll be big on Stanley's ribs too, once you taste these award winners. Nick's first tip, score the back membrane. And you literally just do some cuts across the back and you make a little diamond. Then Nick dredges the ribs in a heavy coat of their one of a kind rub, a Memphis style rub with a Texas twist. But to make it Texas, we put cumin and chili powder in I'm smelling in it. it right yeah. now, yeah. The ribs are smoked for three hours over a pecan wood fire. We like to cook ribs at 300 degrees. The reason why, I'll be honest with you, is when I started, I'm not a morning person, and I was like, there's <laughs> got to be a way I can get these done a little faster. Those are some juicy ribs. Cheers. Cheers. They're damn good. If barbecue is what you came for, bourbon is what'll make you stay. These are all 90 proof bourbons. One of Nick's favorites, Buffalo Traces Colonel E.H. Taylor. This is really smooth. It's super smooth. Just like wine, bourbon has its own special nuances. Fruit, woods, tannins, cherries, chocolates, vanillas. Add an ice cube and those nuances change. We're checking nuances. Good. I've never checked nuances Cheers. before. Cheers. It's just so good. That's nice. Actually, they're all really nice. Good bourbon and great barbecue. What an awesome combination. It's just a great place. Come experience. It's a good place to be. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Texan this week in my wine finds in celebration of Texas Wine Month. And I want to start with something sweet from Messina Hop. This is the Papa Paolo Port. This wine has a loyal following of fans. If you're not familiar, port wines are fortified, which boosts the alcohol content. Typically, they're from Portugal. This one's from Texas. Ports are fantastic dessert wines, and Messina Hoff's is luscious at about $14 a bottle. Up next, one more sweet selection, this time from the Wimberley Valley Winery. This is a wine called Sweet Blush. This is a fruit forward wine that bursts with flavors of raspberry and lime, sublime, at about $8 a bottle. And last but not least, a big red wine, not a sweet one, from one of my favorite Texas wine producers. This is the Becker Vineyards Cabernet. It's a luscious Texas cab with dark red fruit, coffee, and hints of cocoa. Napa fans, you'll want to pay homage to one of the Texas wine pioneers. You can check out Becker Vineyards Cabernet for about $18.98 a bottle. As always, I found all my wines.
and H-E-B. Stay right there. Find out how you could win a relaxing weekend at the Houstonian. How about a luxurious weekend away, complete with spa treatments? This could be your chance. Sign up right now at goodtaste.tv for a chance to win a luxurious weekend at the Houstonian Hotel. This getaway includes relaxing spa treatments at the award-winning Trellis Spa, along with breakfast from the Houstonian's signature restaurant, Olivet. Don't forget to set your DVRs right now for next week's show. And share your good taste with me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Use the hashtag good taste. If you missed anything from today's show, you can always catch it online at goodtaste.tv. That's where you'll find the recipes as well. That's all our time for this week, guys. Cheers to good taste. Now, do I look at this thing? Yes, yeah, that's your camera now. <laughs> but then do I ignore it when it flies up and just act like I'm still doing the... Did that work? Look how tiny the seed is in this avocado. Oh if I stab God. that, I'll cut off a few fingers. <laughs> Oops, pardon me. Let me switch over to that. I take <laughs> okay. this out of the way. Redo, redo. Redo. <laughs> There's just something about barbecue. You know, Absolutely. everyone's watching this, Absolutely. it's like, wow. You're not a vegetarian, are you? <laughs> not quite. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.